Hello and welcome to the final video in our course. In this video, I wanted to discuss uh, a little bit on the very cutting edge of LLMs and what's next both for the industry and for you as someone who wants to work with large language models. So GPT-4 was released. Obviously our course is using GPT-3. Uh, you won't have to throw out any of the things we've learned. They're all gonna be very relevant for GPT-4. The big differences between GPT-4 and GPT-3 are that GPT-4 can actually understand images. You can feed in an image as a prompt and it will understand that image, which is very cool. You can use 10 times as many tokens in its prompts compared to GPT-3. So you can give your bot a whole lot more context. And if you're having a conversation, the bot can remember a lot more of that conversation. It's also a lot stronger in non-English languages. On the live stream that announced GPT-4, they did a really cool example where they used GPT-4 to translate a sketch of a website on a piece of paper into HTML that actually rendered that website. So, I mean, just that tiny snippet of functionality could be amazingly disruptive. So it's, it's clear that OpenAI are the industry leaders right now, and it's exciting to see uh, what GPT-4 will be able to do. Now we've been focusing on GPT-3 and OpenAI's uh, tools in this course, but I wanted to point out that there are some other interesting options. One is Cohere.ai. It's founded by one of the people who wrote a famous academic paper called Attention is All You Need, which is really kind of the basis for all of these large language models, big transformer models in AI. This was created actually out of the Google Brain team, and Google has also released their own LLM now called Palm. Facebook has done the same, open sourcing their large language model, Llama. So feel free to experiment with these other LLMs as they're all racing now to see who can produce uh, the most useful tools. Now what's going to change as this LLM technology really takes hold? I'll uh, give you some of my ideas. Uh, I really think it's going to change the way we're going to work with software. In the olden days, you know, the software was produced with features. That's all you could do. In the 2010s, people started producing APIs that allowed developers, people who are handy with tech, to extend those programs and connect them with other programs. And that was a big leap forward. And now I feel that you're going to have software that's going to be forced to uh, open itself up to being used via a large language model uh, conversationally. Uh, one example that's going to you know, uh, happen pretty soon is in the Microsoft suite of products. Microsoft bought a large stake in OpenAI, and they are going to be plugging this into all their business tools, such as Excel. So you can imagine last year or right now, if you wanted to do uh, interesting data analysis on an Excel spreadsheet and make some fancy graphs. You need to know a lot about how to use Excel and you need to know how to do a pivot table and a VLOOKUP and make a graph and all that stuff. I think really soon you're gonna just be able to say, uh, hey Excel, in the day, for the data in this sheet, can you do some graphs showing some interesting insights about the relationship between the seasons and our revenue for our business? And it'll do that analysis, it'll create those graphs and just make it a lot easier for everyone. But of course, it's going to change how we're using software and certain skills like knowing all the Excel uh, formulas might not be as valuable and other skills like prompt engineering might be more valuable. Another thing that I think will change now that LLMs are taking the world by storm is social media. It used to be really obvious when a bot was talking to you on Reddit or Twitter, maybe they could only trick the most gullible among us who weren't aware that there are some malicious actors that can use bots. But we've seen that GPT-3 and now GPT-4 and these models can speak so fluently and so realistically, and you can trigger this all programmatically. So it's hard to stop it's hard to stop this wave of bots. And I do think that social media will get even more fraught with not knowing if all of those Reddit comments that are recommending a certain product are real people who like the product, or maybe they're bots that are just created very easily by the corporation or their marketing team. 
So there might be some change in social media behavior. Maybe we'll need to prove, you know, more rigorously that you are a human being and not a bot before using these tools. And in the short term, we're all going to have to be a lot more careful to trust the things you read online that apparently come from a human because you're going to be a lot less certain of that. So how can you start to leverage some of these LLM tools uh, in your career to make a difference in your career progression? I would encourage you to think about a few things. One is getting creative. You can use these LLMs in a very specific way if you're working on chatbots or you want to generate some marketing copy, but the limits to what you can do with these tools are absolutely unknown right now. So definitely think outside the box and forge uh, new areas where you might be able to use these tools. And I think you'll have success there. I would encourage you to share your work. I've noticed that a lot of people are building in public and being really generous with sharing their prompts and what they're working on and how they're thinking of through these problems. And I would encourage you to do the same because it helps the entire community. And of course, you'll get some more visibility on yourself as you're starting to play with these tools and generate cool outputs. It can be a win-win. You can uh, help others as well as attract some attention for all the cool stuff you're doing. And finally, if you have skills in other areas, whether it's programming or writing or teaching, combining LLMs with the skills that you already have is going to be a good tool. I know that a lot of people have started getting really good results, starting to use LLMs in like a chatbot context, speaking to their customers by combining web scraping and conventional search to figure out the knowledge domain that the LLM should be searching and then feeding that into GPT to uh, put the answer into really natural language and have a great conversation. So LLMs can really extend a lot of other different technologies that people are already using that you might already be proficient in. So using them in collaboration can be a great idea. Well, congratulations. It has been a pleasure teaching you in this course, and I can't wait to see what together we can build and achieve with large language models.